What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Hollywood Already Did It, your movie podcast for reboots, sequels, and anything that's been done before, asking why we keep retelling the same stories, if they were relevant then, if they're relevant now, and if we're just out of ideas. As always, I am your host, Blake Schultz, and with me is Terrence Tatum. Hello, everyone. And this Memorial Day weekend, we are talking about The Little Mermaid, the I don't even know how many live action adaptations they've done I've now. Count. Yeah, yeah uh, but you know, we're going to keep doing them, I guess. They keep making money and I keep wondering why. Uh, <laughs> but here we are, a, uh, you know, a whole new world. That's not the song. Under the no, Sea. No, Under the Sea. New, you're, yeah, Under you're, the that's Sea. That's Aladdin. Aladdin's a whole new world. <laughs> She wants to go to their world. There's yeah. always a new world. There's always a, a discrepancy of like either rich or poor or this community and that community. And then the two worlds come together despite parents not wanting them to. And then there's magic and a wish and nothing's really resolved. No. It was just, I don't we'll know just, what it... We'll ignore all the pain and suffering we had in the world because you guys like each other. So cool. I don't know why with this movie, I was like, are all of these, is every Disney animated classic the same? Is it always a princess who doesn't want whatever she's about to get? And then someone outside of her world gets into that world and then they love each other. (laughs) Uh, I think for the most part, they all follow that formula. Yeah, that sounds about that's right. almost always <laughs> it. Yeah. Uh, but what did you think of The Little Mermaid? Um, so I'm my two favorite Disney animated films are, are Aladdin and The Little Mermaid. So this one had a pretty high bar for me because Aladdin, I, I liked parts of it, uh, parts of it I did not like. That is kind of the same with this one. Um, I like more than I I like more in this than I did in Aladdin. So let me start there. Um, I think Hallie is fantastic as Ariel. Like she is, she is the price of admission. Like that's the reason most people are going back to see this. Why a huge community of people who probably never seen the original or galvanized to go watch this film. It's happening because the black community has somebody that looks like them on screen. So start there, and I think she nails it. She's great. I think Melissa McCarthy is great. I love Ursula. I love her. Ursula's supposed to be over the top and kind of very physical, and I and I dug it. She she was great. Um, I I have a problem a little bit with some of the new additions, more so the story elements, like the whole Triton and, and Ursula being brother and sister. I was like, we don't. That wasn't necessary for the cartoon. That's not necessarily really necessary here. Um, and the songs, two of them work for me. I I actually I know people. It can go either way. People are if, if on the scuttlebutt song. Uh, I feel like if you are a person of color and you like Hamilton and that type of stuff, you'll kind of lean the Lin Manuel stuff. You kind of dig it. If you're not, you probably won't. It worked for me. The song for Eric, uh, I could absolutely do without. Um, I think I think it's terrible. I think it's sung terribly, and I don't think that lyrically it's it's a it's a good book on it either. So that was the one part that kind of just yanked me out of the movie. Um, I like how it looks. I like how it feels. It feels like the little mermaid everything kind of works but there are some things that the biggest thing for me the connection between triton and ariel just didn't work and a lot of that is because for me i don't have a problem with javier bardem but for some reason in this particular role it just didn't work for me and i just had no i don't care about the color casting because this was almost like a theatrical play you're kind of like everybody can be whatever color just something about the way that he was delivering it didn't i never felt that Ariel honestly should be that afraid of him. Like, it just felt really, eh. Like, I know that's your father, but it did, I didn't get that. Like, in the cartoon, when Triton gets pissed, you're like, she is in deep trouble. And this one, I'm like, oh, she might get, in, she might get talking to her a little bit. And I never get that way. And that's, for me, a lot of the impetus that pushes her to go and make that decision to go talk to Ursula. And I never get that. And so a lot of it is kind of like, oh, I'm doing this because the original book for The Little Mermaid said to do this, as opposed to what this story is telling me now, doesn't feel like Ariel really earned the right to go talk to Ursula. It's like she's doing that. And like, oh, now you're being a little bit selfish. And that's where this loses me a bit. Overall, though, I had a good time. It was enjoyable. Um, but I, I, I still, outside of the color, the representation aspect of it, I still think the animated version holds up a lot stronger than this. A hundred percent. I think that's how I have felt about each one. And I've liked some of them. I think Cruella's still my favorite because mm-hmm. it does the most like hard left. Yeah. Uh, I liked Aladdin because I like that 
that's my favorite animated one. Uh, I don't hate the Lion King, but I am like, how did you get Beyonce and Donald Glover and not do more? <laughs> yeah. And that's sort of how I felt here because she is so good at being Ariel. And yeah. I liked all the underwater stuff and the different mermaids and Sebastian I thought was great and great. Flounder was fun. Mm -hmm. And it was so strange to me that I sat there for two hours and 15 minutes and felt like no one did anything. And I, I think my biggest issue, what doesn't work for, with these movies is just these the padding. I, we should just do 90 minute fun musicals and get out of there because we keep adding things that are unnecessary, like them being brother and sister and like this weird agency that that the, that the prince's family has of well the merb the sea gods hate us and we can't go there and the humans hate us and what was weird about that dichotomy was it never felt like anyone really cared that much about it mm -hmm. like no one javier bardem never is like well if we go up there it's war and we need to be ready for war and same with the royal family. They were always just like, well, the sea gods, you know, they don't care much for us. Yeah. It's all like, been how... superfluous. It's like, oh, they keep they keep having uh, shipwrecks and stuff ends up down here, but that's all we're upset about. I'm like, well, that's that's not enough. Yeah, they, they kind of go into some of the, well, you know, the humans don't care about the ocean and it's the mm -hmm. polluting. And, oh, I don't think it's really their fault that these crashes are happening, but there is no anything else behind that. And I think that was the same problem with the father-daughter connection they had. Was it just, you know, in the first one, you get the sense that if she's not there, the whole kingdom doesn't operate anymore. And when she abandons it, it affects everyone. Right. And it really, really felt like in this one, it didn't really matter. And Javier Bardem just felt bad. Yeah. And I think that even happened with some of like Ursula is like, oh, and he got all the power and I didn't get anything. And I was like, I don't, I don't, I don't understand why this matters because I haven't yeah. really seen him rule anything. Like when and you I, do Scar and Mufasa, you're like, oh, Scar is in this like <coughs> shitty place. Right. And Mufasa rules a kingdom and right. no one likes Scar. And it feels like Ursula made an active choice to go over there right it seemed like she wanted to take this part of the, the ocean and just do her thing and do her vibe it doesn't seem like triton put you there uh it seemed like you chose that life and so yeah all the themes they tried to add to make it more i don't know of today yeah didn't really connect and same so the with, best scenes were the ones that were like pulled from it from the yeah same with like the I, I get it because you did colorblind casting for his parents and whatnot too but him being basically adopted or fostered it didn't matter like you didn't need to add that to this to kind of overcomplicate this uh, other than saying hey you don't belong to this world you don't belong of your world we should merge into the worlds like guys you can simply this is a 90 minute animated film keep it as that <laughs> like well it's almost made it lose what used to make disney releases special was a very frustrating to be fair practice of and then it's back in the vault. Lock it and in now the vault. we've pulled it out of the vault. <laughs> and I uh, I hate when we remove things from streaming services, like with Willow and everything else. But there's a small part of me that's like, how have they not made the vault? And how are they not sort of mm -hmm. doing it? Like, here's Aladdin. Watch it while you can. And then we'll pull it out sometimes. And we'll put it back. And we'll pull it out again. They um, sort of created the specialness of those back in those classics back in the day. And now they don't do it anymore. And I like, nope, it's there whenever you want it. And that it's a little bit of why things are the way they are. Uh, it's uh, it's the frustrating thing that I feel like I talk about ad nauseum with, with the word content that I hate, where I <laughs> feel like these used to be events and the release was an event and they would bring it they would roll it out for this special time and there's a new dvd and you got a little bit to do it and now it's like oh there's just more disney content out and there's more little mermaid content there it's there just enjoy it it's mm -hmm. all lumped in and the minute it doesn't get us our tax return we'll pull it away <laughs> forever and i i just hate that it feels like we're not only doing that with like Disney movies, but with like all these movies. And it's very weird that the little mermaid and these Disney remakes to me have become the most indicative thing of this, that we create one 
fun thing to hook you in, whether it's like a celebrity in a song or a like, look at all the underwater stuff we're doing. Mm -hmm. And then we just kind of throw it off to the next one and it shows up on an app and we're like, yeah, it's there. It's fine. Just, you know, it's yeah. That was only $200 million we spent. Just, you know what? Click it when you want to. It's fine. It's almost <laughs> what happens with like the Pixar brand too. Like every now and then I'm like, oh yeah, this used to really be like a thing I got excited about. I completely and... forgot that Elemental comes out in like two weeks. I said, like, oh yeah, that's a thing. Huh, cool. When you're right, that used to be like, Oh, Pixar is coming, but a lot of that, a lot of that got watered down in the the pandemic when they were putting stuff on streaming, kind of just releasing it. But Pixar brand got a little bit watered down at that point, and then they start releasing two in a year. But yeah, it's a little bit of that. You're like, ah, uh, you don't, you're not doing the things that you used to, mainly because you have to turn out content so much. You're just like moving on to the next, moving on to the next. But that's our show, everybody. Thank you for listening. As always, you can follow us on Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram at Hollywood ADI. We have our YouTube channel, Hollywood Already Did It, where Terrence does his trailer reactions and show reviews for whatever is out that he is watching. And I'm at, as always, Blake. He is at Terrence Tatum. And we will see everybody next week for Spider-Verse. And then I think the week after for Transformers, whichever number it is. 75. Um, I mean, I, I it's going to be a good time. All right. We will see everybody next time.